I said I'd be back with a part two. To start, I'm going to recap on the last video so you understand what I've already covered and I'm going to follow that up with a brief table of contents for this video. Okay, we all good? We understand? Yes, awesome. There is a part one to this, which you may want to watch to understand the entire context of this video. And there's a part 1.5, wherein I address some mistakes I made, which quite honestly, mostly were just a couple of clarifications and some mispronunciations because I can't speak English. <laughs> uh, yeet me. Okily dokily hiddly ho, let's start with a recap. In my video, the first video, I talked about how I didn't like that Nin kind of inadvertently promoted the Potiate Centre, the place in which Nin was supposedly diagnosed by Dr. Remy Aquaron, who is a therapist, and if you didn't know in the United Kingdom, Therapists cannot diagnose anyone in any way, shape or form. Only psychiatrists can do that because psychiatrists are the only mental health professional who have medically gone through training. Okay, we understand we're all on the same page in the United Kingdom. We're talking about the United Kingdom in the country in which both me and Nin reside. Yes, understood. Cool. I also offhandedly wondered where the other £400 which she crowdfunded went because she was apparently quoted for a £600 evaluation but she raised £1,000. She lives in Norwich where the Pottergate Centre is so there's no accommodation or travel costs so I'm just wondering where the other £400 went, you know, just wondering, curious and that. And before anyone jumps into the comment section saying that I think that Nin is faking DID, that's not true. I actually believe that she does have DID. She just wasn't diagnosed by Dr. Remy Aquaron as her alter Jade claims, because he can't do that in any way, shape or form. In the next section, I talked about her claim, which she's made on at least two separate occasions, that the University of East Anglia kicked her out on the basis that she had DID which isn't proof that she was in fact kicked out of the University of East Anglia for having DID. Just because she said it doesn't mean it's true. I pointed out the fact that this is illegal, not because illegal things don't happen in this country, but because she could probably press charges against the university if that did happen. I haven't seen any proof of any charges being levelled at the University of East Anglia, and therefore I do not believe this claim. Moving swiftly onward up the races, we talked about misinformation and bad sources, and I gave the example that she said that people with schizophrenia 100% of the time pretty much have hallucinations, when it's actually 70% of people with schizophrenia will experience hallucinations making her claim absolutely false. And no, this isn't the only instance of misinformation, it was merely an example. So people can stop saying, she got one thing wrong. Yes, it was called an example, not every single catalogue list of information that she has got wrong. I have a full-time job and unfortunately I don't have the time to make a list of every single mistake and misinformation that Nin has given out. But I'm fairly sure we can point to some of that later on in this video, if you wish. I then moved on to talk about her bad sources, because some of the sources she uses are incredibly outdated, because one cannot use 120-year-old sources as evidence for your point to today's society. And I'll actually be talking more in depth about the problems with her sources in the first segment of this video, just to explain and go into depth as to why her sources were bad, and therefore she doesn't actually provide up-to-date information. Okay, we're coming up to the very last hurdle. I've been talking very fast so I can fit this all in the first five minutes. I feel like I am commentating a horse race. I then went on to talk about, in the last section, the real Nin. How she continued to accept sponsorships from BetterHelp even after it had been exposed to being a shady company and essentially profited off her own fans' mental health. I then went to talk about how she defended Team Piñata behind the scenes after they were exposed for doing some dirty, dirty things and how she seemingly uses her friends for clout and money and views and gain. One thing I probably should have added in that section is she actually stole the Anthony Padilla gig off Multiplicity and Me. Anthony Padilla's casting team reached out to Multiplicity and Me well before Nin. In fact, Nin actually she was the one to reach out from Anthony Padilla when she found out Multiplicity and Me couldn't actually make it to the show. Multiplicity and Me was a fairly new parent and wasn't sure about leaving her child at home, so instead she was working with Anthony Padilla's team to promote a much smaller DID creator. Learning about this, Nin actually went ahead and contacted Anthony Padilla's casting team and essentially inserted herself into it, rather than giving the gig to somebody with a much smaller audience. Okay, good, we all sorted on that part. We have pretty much gone through the entirety of the first video and added an extra point. No one can say that I'm not informative, because I am very informative. And I can stop talking really, really fast now. Yay. On to the table of contents. 
After talking about all of that, what more could I possibly talk about? Oh my friends. Oh my sweet summer children. For the first part of this video I'll be talking about the sources, going deeper into the sources, why they are bad, why she shouldn't have used them, and the statistics surrounding DID, that 3%, which baffles me. The next part we're going to move on to the cheery problematic behaviour, including racism. Yep. Following that I will be talking about financial exploitation of her fans, her Patreon and associated draws. After that, I'll be following up with some unanswered questions she refuses to address. Questions that she's been asked over and over again that she still doesn't acknowledge even when coming back to the platform. I then want to finish on a note giving the YouTubers with DID a voice that they may not previously have had. Okay, class, please sit down. Jimmy, please stop flicking that eraser at Hannah. Thank you very much. Today we're going to be talking about very basic research within psychology. This is taught at A level, which is for 16 to 18 year olds, should any of you be curious. So why any quote unquote educational service would be using any of these studies is well beyond me, considering that they didn't complete their degree and are using bad sources on what basis they have to call themselves an educational service. <laughs> it truly beggars belief. Okay, I'll drop the faux teacher act. And I will also mention that Nin has actually taken out all of the sources in her videos and instead replaced it with this disclaimer, which tells me that someone's been watching my videos or someone else has made the same point. I'm glad it took this long to figure out that those sources were <coughs> not good. But I'm still going to leave this part in because I want to explain why the studies aren't good. And we'll start with the concept of validity. There are several different types of validity that must be checked when looking at research and studies. There are three main problems with validity in regards to the studies which NINS uses, and I'll talk about those now. The first one is ecological validity, does the study reflect on real life? Many studies have this problem because they're conducted within institutions or in laboratories. And if we are, for example, studying a mental illness, is it effective to use institutions to define mental illness and the experiences and apply it to average everyday people living outside of them? This leads on to population validity. Does it represent the general population of the people with specific disorders? Are institutionalized people with DID going to be the same as people who aren't institutionalized with DID? And then the final one, which is a glaring issue to me, is historical validity. Many of the studies that NIN cites are up to 200 years old. And as we already know, society changes, definitions change, treatments change, and the understanding of specific disorders change. Therefore, even a study that is 10 years old can be considered outdated. I also decided to look at the statistic of DID. The YouTubers that I've watched have stated that the prevalence of DID in comparison to the general population is 1-3%. to What do you think the biggest misconception is surrounding DID? A lot of people think that it's really rare. Yeah. But it, the same percentage of people who have ginger hair have the ID. What is that, 1 to 3 percent? 1 to 3 percent, yeah, which means it's um, as common as bulimia, more common than schizophrenia. I'm finding it hard to find any study that pinpoints this definitively because DID is an under-research disorder. So how can you make the definitive claim that it's between 1 and 3 percent if it hasn't been researched thoroughly? The DSM-5 estimates between 1.5 to 2 percent. I'm unsure as to where this 3% has come from at all. And studies I found that had a higher percentage were talking about dissociative disorders, not dissociative identity disorders specifically, just dissociative disorders. Because I was finding it hard to believe that DID is more prevalent than schizophrenia, which has a high basis of 
geneticism being a key factor, whereas DID is circumstantial and So it would make more sense if these researchers were talking about dissociative disorders in general and not specifically DID, because I just don't believe that it's more prevalent than a disorder which has genetic characteristics. A disorder that has many different studies backing it using monozygotic twins, identical twins that share the exact same DNA. Wherever it came from, I think the motivation for using this statistic is to destigmatize DID by trying to make it sound more common than it is. Because if it's more common than we think it is, it must be normal, right? And I think this is where a lot of mental health advocacy falls flat. And everybody has their own normal. So if you want to normalize something while rejecting the idea of normal, it sounds, hmm counterintuitive. We shouldn't be normalizing mental health conditions because if we make it normal, how is one supposed to know when there's a problem and they need to get help? And this isn't commentary about Nin herself saying that DID is normal, it's just an observation I've made in the mental health community. They've conflated normalization with destigmatization, which works for some causes such as the LGBT community but doesn't really work with mental health conditions that well. And I wouldn't want anybody to normalize my PTSD because it's not normal. It shouldn't be trivialized or romanticized or made to be an everyday thing for everyday people because it's a condition that requires treatment. And while the notion that Nin is trying to normalize DIG is pure speculation, for my part, it would actually be a credit on her part, seeing as she's doing it to destigmatize DID, no matter how misguided that method may be, there is one thing I can talk about. How she uses DID and her disorder to normalize things such as, hmm, racism. Okay, that wasn't my smoothest transition to another topic ever. However, I'm going to show you this piece of fan art, something drawn for Nin. And I'm going to give you a moment to think about what's wrong with this picture. Have you got it yet? It begins with black and ends in face. Nin has romanticized DID in such a way that she encourages her fans to draw pictures essentially of her in blackface. This is supposed to be fan art of Nadia, her 17 year old Native American alter. I understand that DID is picked up on a subconscious level and therefore the mind of a child might not recognize the problem with this. However, people in the Native community were telling Nin that Nadia was problematic for describing herself as Native American right from the get go. What did she do? What did she do? She blocked all of their comments and ignored them. I wanted to double check just how insensitive this is. So I asked one of my Native American friends. Yes, I have one of those. In fact, I'm actually looking into getting one of each tribe. You can apply in my DMs below. And this is what she said, so... I don't relate to this body's skin. I'm quite dark. I'm Of course, she was later forced to apologise this via Tumblr post, which the format, by the way, annoys the hell out of me. The way that she bolds what she thinks are the most important parts, but it just comes off as condescending. For example, how she bolds the part where it says, from a fictional book. Okay, Nin, you do know that fictional portrayals of certain racial groups can still be harmful, right?
Even after the apology, she continued to upset the Native American community who had been reaching out for her for so long, explaining exactly why Nadia was a problem by either drawing or promoting a drawing of Nadia being hmm, hyper utilized. Which, as this user here pointed out, is a problem because Native American women suffer disproportionately from being victims of... So I'm going to make this explicitly clear. She was called out by Native Americans for describing one of her alters as Native American when she is a white girl apologized for it, and then continued to do it. Of course, she tried to cover this up by changing the description in her My Alters Make Themselves in the Sims video or something, stating that Nadi is not black or native and will not claim any connections to that. She already did. And what do the people who tried to educate her on the topic say? This is so disappointing. I tried and thought I had succeeded with the in-depth conversations I had with Dissociated. I wrote up pages about it in Google Docs. I put aside hours of my time and large amounts of my emotional energy, but it seems like it did nothing. It feels like I'm wasting my breath at this point and that the DID community is going to be continued to be dismissive and racist. This is why I've left the community. Do better. The community was never safe for POC, honestly. She certainly didn't help, though. I feel very betrayed by the promises she made. The ones made directly to me after I explained all the race stuff, wrote pages of info for her, and edited her first apology. That's interesting as well. Edited her first apology. How sincere is an apology if you have to have someone else edit it for you? Just saying. I was heartbroken when she didn't follow through, when she deleted her whole blog, I believe they're referring to her Tumblr blog, when she still posted appropriative art on her social media, which are deleted now, when she displayed clearly fake dream catches in videos, when she ghosted me and stopped responding to my attempts to reach out and express my disappointment, and especially when she namelessly used me as an excuse and a reason she couldn't possibly be a racist in her newest posts and comment sections. But even so, the community was racist before she got popular. I had just hoped she'd be someone who helped change it. If she had made an apology video, it would have done so much, helped so many people, and that's the part that really hurts. This next part is in regards to BLM and a live stream that was streamed on Axolotls in a trench coat channel four months ago. The live stream isn't actually available anymore, it's privated. However, this post on Reddit provides timestamps and quotations various timestamps and quotations. I'd also like to add that if you didn't know, Axolotls is a POC within the DID community. Around 42 minutes in the stream, they stated, a discussion that we had the other day. This is the hard thing because I don't want to cause hatred or drama, but I want to stand up for what is right. I was like, hey, I heard there were comments being deleted. This is in regards to the BLM post that she made. The caption is currently on screen. What's the deal with that? And pointed out that silencing black voices in a post about BLM negates the point of making the actual post. Dissociated was just like, yeah, but we've posted links and stuff like that. Deleting a couple comments or blocking a couple people that got aggressive. Now, I didn't personally see any aggressive comments. I'd just like to add here, what Nin perceives to be aggressive or hostile isn't necessarily aggressive or hostile. I was just like, hey, this is problematic, and I kind of got to the point of going around in circles with Nin about it. I was just like, 
Look, it's your content. You can do what you like. You asked for my opinion, but we seem to be going around in circles. She was saying it should be okay to censor slash restrict her comments. I even said this. You may as well just take the BLM post down because black lives clearly don't matter if you're going to be silencing them. Around 47 minutes in, they state... This is kind of where it got me really agitated because, again, we'd been going round in circles for the past hour about why silencing black voices isn't an appropriate thing to do on a post like that, let alone in general when speaking about racial issues involving black people. In response to me saying that, she said, Our life matters too. And that's kind of where I... I wouldn't say I lost my... But I did put my foot down in the message I sent back to her. It was really sus to me. It was just like hearing an all lives matter type thing because I was like, don't you dare, I don't know, say that in this context. They then go on to state that they left the group chat that they were in. However, around one hour, one minute in, they state, we had multiple accounts in the group chat because a couple of alters in the system have individual accounts. We exited the chat with our main, but there were two other accounts still in there, one of which was mine. The message after we left the chat was JFC, Jesus F Christ, that was written by Dissociated. What we said was, writing Jesus in Christ is rude, unnecessary, and invalidating as hell. This is my last message here. I can only hope that you wise up in the future. I don't know about you, but my first reaction when somebody who has had a different experience than me comes to me and talks to me about their experience is to listen to them. Like, isn't that called um, common decency? So not only did she ignore the Native American community for ever, essentially, and then broke her promises to the Native American community, she also then went on to minimalize axolotls and their advice and their own experiences because axolotl is black. And how can you turn around to them and be like, Jesus effing Christ, that's minimization of their issues, Nin. Putting up links and numbers is nothing when you don't listen to them. That's called performative activism. Pick up a book. For somebody who has created a channel to shed light on an issue that you face and the stigmatization and the prejudice that you face, you really don't listen to the stigmatization and oppression of other people. Let's talk about something that isn't necessarily to do with the first section of this, but it's still problematic. Don't cross me, baby. Hashtag Halloween. Hashtag battered. Hashtag bruised. Hashtag burned. Hashtag makeup. Hashtag selfie. Hashtag portrait. Hashtag close up. Hashtag pale. Hashtag brunette. Hashtag teen girl. Hashtag fancy dress. Hashtag party. Hashtag don't cross me. Okay, so what's the problem here? First, hashtag battered like battered woman syndrome like the united kingdom battery law she doesn't say what the costume's supposed to be she doesn't say oh i'm a for example apocalypse survivor and that's why i have bruises there's nothing to this it's simply bruises and hashtag battered hashtag bruised hashtag burned followed by hashtag teen girl because nin is an academic and looks at research and studies and preaches about how harmful stereotypes and harmful propaganda can hurt people, you would have thought that she would have maybe looked into this and she would have known that teenagers are a risk group for battery. There's no trigger warning, there's no thought for the people who might see this and be affected by it. Speaking of people who might see this and might be affected by it, your time to talk, Xylee. It's important to note that what Xylee is about to talk about is adolescent and adult relationships regarding these issues and has nothing to do with DID or the development of DID, which, as we all know, starts in childhood. Here's my thought about that makeup. 
I don't understand how people think it's cute or even okay to make makeup like that to it makes absolutely no sense to me are you a survivor because let me tell you as a survivor that makeup is bullshit if if you're doing it for a campaign against you know, anything like that that's fine but to make it for for a night that people are supposed to be celebrating, you think it's cute to walk around as a or even a survivor? That's absolutely ridiculous. How, are you an survivor? Well, let me tell you, as a survivor, it's not cute to have those bruises on your face. It's not. It's not cute having those bruises on your face and you trying desperately to put on makeup to cover it. It's not cute to walk around with half your face look like a gerbil because your significant other decided to backhand you and your whole side, one side of your face swell up. It's not cute trying to explain to people why your lip is big and you come up with some dumb ass excuse covering for the asshole who did it to you. It's not cute to have bruises all on your arm coming up with excuses for people. It's not cute not going around your family because you don't want them to see that. And yet you're going to lolly doll make a makeup look like that? You know what? Get the out of here. Get the out of here. It's not cute. And you honestly need to go somewhere else with that. It triggers people. When I saw that picture, I remember what it was like for six years wonder, waking up every day wondering if that was going to be my last day on this earth. And you think you're just going to pull off a makeup look like that? F*** you. Nin has never apologized for this makeup look or not tagging it appropriately with a trigger warning. But this isn't a new thing. She apologized to the native community and then continued doing the same thing that they were criticizing her for. She has never apologized for silencing black voices on her post. She just hasn't. So when people are saying that they have hope that Nin can grow and change, where has she ever demonstrated that she can grow and change. This part, not gonna lie, makes me livid and I've recorded this many different times trying to be as calm as possible. This part of the video isn't for Nin. This isn't from Nin to learn from. This is for her fans. And it makes me mad, this section, because it harms you her fans. I'm going to bring on YouTube Psych Myths with one of her videos and show you a couple of clips from them. I'm then going to commentate in between and I will try and be as calm and nice as possible. But please remember to go and subscribe to YouTube Psych Myths. Her link will be in the description below. Checking in. Hello everyone. We wanted to make a little post to let you know we are surviving and how much we appreciate all your support here, especially during and tears being on hold. You are all incredible and your donations are keeping us housed, able to pay rent and necessary costs while we aren't able to be working on YouTube. Patreon isn't a charity. It isn't to give donations to somebody. That's not what Patreon is for. Patreon is a service. There is supply and demand within Patreon. There is terms of service with Patreon and you need to fulfill the perks you promised you would fulfill for your supporters. There is automatically a power imbalance between a creator and a supporter because the supporter already likes and wants to help out the creator. So when people say to me, well, she told them that she wasn't going to be able to fulfill the perks and they still kept pledging, that's their bad. No, there's a power imbalance. And then with this paragraph, this paragraph alone, there's also emotional manipulation. There is emotional manipulation because I can tell you now, there is no way whatsoever that Nin is going to go without rent or food anytime soon. And I can say that as a definitive fact. Nin is a 1 million sub YouTuber. 
and according to Social Blade, earns upwards of 56k a year. To put that into perspective, the average NHS employee will earn around 26k a year. But Charlie, it's between 3.5k and 56k a year. What if it's only 3.5k? That is only ad revenue. That doesn't take into account any sponsorships or live stream donations or any other donations that she's received. And we know from declarations from other DID YouTubers that she does receive hefty donations. I'm going to give Nin a little bit of advice. Nin, if you can no longer fulfill the perks, you know, those things that you promised people would get in return for their monetary pledge to you, pause the pledges. I'm not going to be pissing around in this part because I think that financially exploiting your viewers is one of the worst things a YouTuber can do. It makes me angry because you can pause them. You don't have to write out a paragraph about how you're going to go without rent or without food because that's a lie. It's a lie, Nin. I know that and you know that. I'm going to give you another little piece of advice because I too am an educational service. I just spit facts rather than trying to seem more academic than I am. If for some reason you are ever in financial trouble, it is not the responsibility of your supporters to get you out of it. That's your problem. It is your responsibility. The people supporting you are most likely already being heavily impacted by the events of this year. It is not up to them to keep you afloat. And I say this with the utmost sincerity. Get a job. This country is starved of care workers. Six weeks of training and you can have a steady job in social care rather than emotionally manipulating your fans. Sorry you had that experience. I've heard quite a few people talking about negative experiences with their Patreon. Would you ever be willing to share what it was like for you? She would go months without posting anything. I joined back in 2018 and signed up for the $15 a month tier because it said I would get access to blooper reels. Within three months, I dropped down to the $5 a month tier because she hadn't uploaded any blooper reels. So I was like, well, F that, I'm not going to keep paying for stuff I'm not getting. The $5 one let you submit your own suggestions for video topics, and I again dropped down a tier after a couple months because there was never a post about submitting your own topic. Even being at the $1 tier, I was really annoyed because it said access to Patreon-only live streams. Literally the entire time I pay for her Patreon, there was never one Patreon-only live stream, but she always made sure to post photos of the posters slash postcards she was sending out to give us all a feeling of FOMO and that we should pay for that upper tier, which cost $100 a month. Honestly, I forgot I was even paying for her Patreon because the last post before all this happened was in April, saying that she wouldn't be able to mail out stuff because of not getting to the post office. Yeah, this isn't a new thing. This isn't just a 2020, the year of hell on earth thing. She was doing this back in 2018, taking advantage of the people who want to support her and not fulfilling promises. People might come back and say, well, she has mental health problems. She won't be able to deliver everything at every time. Pause perks and don't make promises you can't keep. It's really that simple. Having a mental health condition doesn't mean you can be exploitative and take people's money for nothing. If you're not yet convinced that Nin is hell-bent on financially exploiting her fan base, dissociated draws. It was a gem. It really was. What is Dissociated Draws? Dissociated Draws was Nin's answer to Inktober, where people could draw things from prompts suggested, and winning designs would be picked and put on merch, and the merch would be sold, and all the proceeds given to charity, which sounds great. What's the catch? It was all on Patreon. That's right, you had to pay Nin to participate in an event which has many different versions you can do for free but it's also for charity but you have to pay Nin to participate in giving to charity. Don't worry she has in fact backtracked after all of the backlash she got for it being a patron only event. Let's have a look at some of that backlash. Take it away waifu. Stid wrote, hello 
We aren't returning to making content yet, and as we mentioned in the post, we still aren't well enough to be particularly active online. As lots of people aren't doing Inktober this year, an event that used to bring everyone together and we've done publicly before, we wanted to suggest a new event that can take place in a safe environment that could bring something positive in its place whilst we are still unable to return to YouTube. All the best, user says at Dissociated. It just makes me sad we can't participate simply because we can't afford to. It makes sense that the Patreon is a safe place. Thanks for explaining that. I just think this would be really helpful for us and others that can't be in a space due to the financial difficulties. Hope the event this goes well. This person says, Turning other people's art into merch doesn't quite seem like a good idea. And putting this behind a paywall isn't a good way to bring your community together at all. If you wanted to keep the prompt ideas to patron, fine. But not even letting your fans, who are struggling to make ends meet themselves, participate, or even get to see your art, is super heartbreaking. Like, $30 to watch you draw for something you want to bring your community together doesn't seem like it's for that reason. Why? Dissociated response. Our lowest tier is $1. You can see our art and participate in the event on that tier, as well as vote. Not everybody has a dollar to give to you, Nin. We wanted to keep it as accessible as possible. We only use Patreon and YouTube as our social platforms, and by using Patreon, we can moderate the event and keep it safe for everyone. It's also a thank you to those who have supported us and been there during our break. We were also talking with someone else on here about maybe putting some of what we make on YouTube Community Tab 2. I'm not sure we will be able to do many prompts, but what we do manage to make, we would love to share. As for the charity merch, we'd be sure to have the express permission of the artist to use it for that purpose, and all the profits will be going to the charity that our patrons choose. One user says, I'm very confused. Why is this a Patreon-only event? From what I've heard, there haven't been any patron tier rewards issued to your donors in months, despite having so many active ones. Why monetize a drawing challenge that could easily take place on social media for free? Are these donation tiers going to charity too? Dissociated responds, We only use Patreon and YouTube, and by using Patreon, we are able to hold the event in a safe environment where posts and comments can be moderated. This means we can help make sure nothing triggering or distasteful is shared, which could trigger others, which we wouldn't be able to do on other platforms. Other Patreon tiers are still on hold, as they have been since we started our break. And this is also a way to thank and creatively interact with the patrons who have been supporting us during that time. I couldn't let my waifu do all the work, could I? So here's some dramatic readings from me. Charlie, to you. I'm really excited about this. I've never been on Patreon before, but I might try it for this purpose if I can fit it into my budget. I hope everyone has fun and I hope you all feel well soon. What I got from this is, hi, I'm struggling financially and I have a budget. I'd still like to join in, but still only if I can fit it in. What does Nin reply to this? Our lowest tier is $1. We wanted to keep it as accessible as possible. If you wanted to make it as accessible as possible, you would make it free. Just a little tip there for the future. If you do join in, we'd love to see what you make. All our love to you. This person is essentially telling you they might not have a dollar. My response would be, okay, don't worry about it. Don't, don't push yourself to pay for something you can't afford. But no, Nin doesn't say that. Shout out to Joe who really hit the nail on the head with this one. Oh my God, stop encouraging people who can't afford to give you money. You are absolutely abhorrent. Joe, I think you're onto something there. Joe knows. Really, you've been gone for however long and the second you come back, you promote your Patreon? Are you kidding? Followed by a flurry of white knights and people who need to learn still. So this is an ad for patron then, yeah? I'm bummed. I wanted to participate. Same sentiments, dude. Hoo hoo. 
Sorry, I don't know how to say that. So this is an event that's supposed to be for charity, but you have to pay in order to be able to contribute to the charity. But what you're paying is really, you're paying dissociated. If this isn't just, hey, anybody can give back and all of it's going to charity. No, in order to even be involved, you have to be paying her. In order to have access to certain things, you have to be at certain levels of the Patreon. If it were really for charity, she would donate all the proceeds to charity. Everything that she's getting for her Patreon should go to charity, if that's what it's about. You don't, you don't pay for a charity in order to pay some more. I also don't understand how this is really a gift to her subscribers. It's what they're doing. It's artwork they're choosing to participate in or not. And again, they can only do it really with her if they're a part of the Patreon. So like, it's just an incentive and nothing else. I would have been less pressed if she just came back and promoted her Patreon and went on her merry way again. I mean, I still would have been pressed because she's not fulfilling perks and is blatantly exploiting the goodwill of her supporters. But this, this is her trying to push a facade of giving and charitableness, which isn't there. You're going to tell me that after posting that she was going to be struggling with rent and food, she's now suddenly a charitable person? because something's not adding up here. We don't know how many patrons she had before this event, and we don't know how many patrons she's gained since the event because she's hidden her patron count. There is a lack of transparency here. With everything that's happened, Nin has a lot of things to address, from everything I mentioned in my part one to everything I've mentioned up till now in this video, things that she will not address. It truly beggars belief how one can have a platform and expect all of the support she does without also taking in any of the criticism. When I did something incredibly petty, which I've admitted to screenshotting certain comments and putting on my community tab, which is a toxic thing to do, I made a video in which I explained what I did, why it's wrong, and I promised to do my absolute best to never repeat the same behaviour, which I haven't done. Meaning that I didn't repeat the action, not that I didn't uphold my promise. In her coming back to YouTube video, she did address two, yes, count that, two separate things. Number one, that the patron tears are back at it again. And I just, do you want to clap for that? Do you want a medal, honestly? You're going to fulfill the perks you promised to fulfill. At least that's happening, that's at the very least. The second is that, no, she is not a mental health professional, which is a thing I was going to criticise her for, because she has been known to say, I am a professional. However, that's kind of negated by the fact she called herself, and has called herself many times, a mental health educational service. Within the United Kingdom, you need to have a license to be an educational service. She didn't mention that. So let's talk about how she's responded to some of the comments in her community posts regarding things she hasn't mentioned. Why is TP still posting drawings as being in a relationship with your system? To our knowledge, they aren't. They were as recently as July slash August, which is way after all of the information came out. Things can become extremely complex when more than one couple is involved in romantic relationships between two systems. It's been a difficult journey which has eventually resulted in our systems no longer being together. Going forward, it's no longer appropriate for us to discuss our personal life on a public platform. We feel this is the best decision for our channel, our personal safety and well-being. Okay, I don't care who you're in a relationship with, Nin. Be with, bang, whoever the hell you want. You disappeared after this information came out. You disappeared and you abandoned your community. 
and there was no apology anywhere for exposing your young audience to this person. Know that live saying, oh, I'm sorry, and and shutting off the camera doesn't count. You need to address this because you have a young and vulnerable audience. You need to apologise to that audience for exposing them to a person like that, whether you knew it or not. You need to apologise for continuing to defend that person behind the scenes well after you knew what they were. People have said to me, well... Nin could have been manipulated by Team Piñata about those drawings. That's speculation. People tell me off for speculating about Nin and then will speculate in her favour. Nin was manipulated. Some of those images were explicit. Some of those images couldn't be manipulated because it's right there in front of you. The person responds to Nin's reply perfectly. Absolutely, you are completely in charge of what you choose to share of your private life, but this isn't a case of people prying and being nosy. Up until recently, your system has publicly supported a blank, even after you denounced them on social media. Was that even real? You must be able to understand people have many questions and have been directly affected by what has come out and your involvement in it. I understand it might be hard to talk about this, but this is someone you have endorsed on your channel and continue to support behind the scenes. This is about you and your system as much as it is about your relationship. I hope this isn't viewed as a drama stirring or hateful because it's not meant to be in the slightest. This is meant to be good faith criticism from a admittedly very disappointed former fan. You need to address everything. The TP situation, the racism, the allegations from former friends of yours, the spread of misinformation, all of it. We used to love you. Your content helped us through so much, but there is too much that you have yet to speak on. The drama started and you disappeared. Your mental health is incredibly important, obviously, and we understand needing to take a break. But you need to address these issues. You owe everyone the truth, especially the people who continue to support you on Patreon. Ronan, thank you for bringing up these issues in a respectful way. We've never intentionally or knowingly spread any misinformation. One of the reasons we include our sources in our videos is to prevent this. We would like to stress that while this channel exists for educational purposes only and we make every effort to provide you with the most accurate and up-to-date information, we are not qualified professionals. As for the allegations of racism, we've addressed this on our Instagram in the following post. Additionally, we have added important information to note about using racial terms to describe alters in the descriptions of our Meet the Alters videos. Going forward, we will continue to refrain from using racial and ethnic descriptive terms to describe any alters appearance within the inner world and continue to learn from the POC and SOC who share their perspective and experiences. We strongly encourage others to do the same. We believe in the power of education to change lives and will strive to do our part in bringing forth a more just and inclusive world to the best of our ability. I believe this is the post that Axolotls was referring to back in the racism segment where she silenced black voices and turned off the comments. Also, the first page of this addressing the issue is a lie because she apologised she rectified some things, but continued to allow images of Nadia in, quite frankly, red face costumes to appear on her channel. There are still videos up with fake dream catchers in the background. You need to address this on YouTube. I'm not sure how many times I have to say this. You use your biggest platform to address controversy if you are genuine because then you get your message across. On Instagram, not everyone has Instagram, but most likely, most people find you through YouTube. So you need to address it on YouTube. 
Regarding Team Piñata, we are no longer in a relationship with them and haven't been for some time. Finally, we've decided not to respond to the hurtful claims other creators made about us. We can tell you that our mental health took a hard hit as a result of all the half-truths and gossip. Still, we don't feel it's appropriate to discuss personal opinions and details of private events on a public platform, even in response to what seemed like a coordinated attack on our reputation. We understand this won't be enough for some people, but we hope to regain some of that lost trust through hard work by making our content the best it can be. Going forward, Dissociated will be focused on educational content only. We believe this is the best decision for our channel and to protect our personal safety and well-being. Thank you for understanding. If you don't address the half-truths and gossip, we don't know the difference between half-truths and gossip and the facts and truth. If you don't address something, it allows for more speculation. It allows for more rumours and gossip to spread. This is shooting yourself in the foot. We don't know what's true and what's not unless you tell us. But quite frankly, at this point, I don't believe a word you say. Because you said, we rectified everything after people on Tumblr told us it was bad. No, you continue to do the same behaviour. And then you silenced black and indigenous voices on your Instagram posts by deleting their comments and then, from what I can tell, disabling the comments entirely. Hey, I was about to do my intro, but then I remember this is not my channel, so hi. Um, I'm gonna just not take too much of your time and briefly talk about the two return videos that Dissociated did. That Dissociated did. I'm not funny, I'm gonna stop trying to be funny. Um, so there's just like very specific points that I want to make. I don't want to talk about the whole thing, obviously, because um, that's not the place for this. But mainly I wanted to talk about the sort of what I would call blatant manipulation in these videos. Um, there's just a couple of points that I want to make and things I want to point out that Nin does in these videos that just seem very manipulative. Um, obviously, there's loads of other smaller things you could pick up on as well, but I'm not gonna talk about everything. I just want to talk about the stuff that I found most interesting. Firstly, the first video that she did, the um, the first return video, the Orla Gartland one, we all know that one. She, um, she sort of echoes a lot of the points that her fans have been making while she's gone. Um, so whenever anybody says anything against Associated or against Nin, her fans are very quick to come and make these arguments. Oh, she's not okay, she needs time, um, she's just trying to help people, it's all just trying to educate people, I've learned so much from her, and all of that stuff, you know? And there's a couple of phrases that she uses in that first video that seems to be sort of emphasizing what her fans have said, sort of telling them that yes, you were right, everything you've said about me is correct, continue to defend me, um, all that. So she says about the getting 1 million subscribers, it's 1 million people uh, learning and having a more trauma-informed something or other. I don't remember exactly what she said. I'm not going to quote directly because that would take too much time to go through the videos again. Um, but it's just saying that, yes, we are purely educational. When a lot of people have made the argument that a lot of the stuff she said hasn't been educational and even as Cringy or Charlie has pointed out, don't know why I called you Cringy, that's your channel name, sorry. <laughs> um, as Charlie has pointed out that a lot of the resources and references that Nin has used in her videos have not been up to date, have been debunked, or have just been not good studies, because there is such a thing as a not good study, not everything that's published is good, um, <laughs> especially when they're very, very old, because a lot of things have changed since then. So, and a lot of people would say that a lot of what Nin portrays is sensationalized. I'm not going to go into that. You already know about all that. Um, so the whole, yes, I am educational. My channel is purely education. That's one million people here who are learning, is just saying to her fans, yes, everything that I say is purely educational. Nothing is sensationalized. Nothing's about me, when a lot of it is about her, let's be honest. Um, checking notes. I really 
hurt my hand when I did that. I, I broke my finger. Um, oh yeah, about the dissociated draws thing. We're glad that so many people felt safe enough to share personal pieces of art with us. And that she wanted to do it on Patreon for that reason. That's why we wanted to do it on Patreon, to create a safe space. Again, it's just like, that's the main argument that all her fans have been making, like, it's fine if she does it on Patreon and charges people to enter a charity competition and whatever, because it's, you know, so people feel safe. And also the, we're so glad that you felt safe. Like, just emphasizing the whole idea of, yes, we are safe. We are a safe environment. Anywhere that is not on our Patreon is not safe. Um, because all oh, those horrible people, they're gonna attack you, but we're not gonna attack you because we love you. Do, am I making sense? I should have written clearer notes. <laughs> Um, small, like, just a small, not manipulation thing, but a small thing I wanted to point out from that video was about, <laughs> she brings out the, or doesn't bring out, it's behind her, the 1 million subscriber plaque, but <laughs> says, oh, we've got this, and we're like, whoa, when did this happen? What? You have to, like, I don't know, she must have meant that, uh, they got the notification that they could get this, and not that the plaque just arrived which is what it sounds like, because if you're saying the plaque just arrived and you didn't know that was going to happen, you need to register to get that. And you also need to give YouTube your address. Like, YouTube does not have everybody's addresses on file. It's not how that works. <laughs> YouTube doesn't have my address. Nobody has my address. Um, yeah, so second video, going to go over that much more briefly because the whole video is just a bunch of generic phrases like healing takes time you can't pour from an empty cup it's all this whole thing of making excuses to not take accountability while also not addressing the things that she's not taking accountability for which is a very smart move on her part because she's she knows that a lot of these people are new and a lot of them do not know the drama they don't, and that's just a fact. A lot of people have commented in my videos and other videos that they don't know about the drama. What did the associate did do? Why are you attacking them? I don't understand. So she knows a lot of people don't know, so she's purposely trying to avoid saying it so people don't go and research it or people don't go and find out. So people who do know what she's talking about are like, yes, you do need to take time and empty cups and other generic phrases that are written on Facebook posts. Well. Everybody else is going, ah, yes, nice phrases, I like this, this makes me feel good. And that's part of the manipulation as well, is that she knows saying these phrases is creating or, or even strengthening the parasocial relationship between her and her fans. Because she's saying all these things about, you know, you gotta look after yourself and you're lovely and I love you and all this. And this is not done accidentally. Nin is not dumb, she's actually very smart. And she's interested in psychology. She's very smart about the way that she speaks to her fans. And she knows full well what she's doing. She knows that by saying these things, she's gonna, first of all, give an excuse for why she's not talking about stuff. Just straight out. And then secondly, make her fans feel more connected to her, more like they have this very exclusive bond that they don't have with anybody else and that will make them defend her even more. And I wouldn't even be surprised if she went and researched parasocial relationships just so she could mimic it or, again, strengthen it. Because her fans are very dedicated, and they're very dedicated because of the language she uses like this, to try and make them feel special when she does not care about them. At all. She doesn't, but she makes them feel like she does. And that way, she has an army of people to defend her and to echo what she has said about the reasons why she can't take accountability for the stuff that she's done. Because healing takes time or something. I don't know. Uh, another thing she said in that video, which whole oh, parasocial relationship thing, you can't help anybody if you're unwell. So that's again her sort of saying <laughs> I'm just here to help you. I'm just helping you. And I can't help you if I'm not okay. Which, as a phrase, yeah, that makes sense. You can't help anybody if you're not okay. But she is saying it in a way that I am just here to help all of you guys. That's all I do. I'm such a martyr. I just hate it. 
I don't know. I hope I'm making clear, tangible sense. <laughs> I'm not sure if I am. Anyway, uh, I was going to touch on some other stuff. This has been 10 minutes. Sorry. I uh, hope I made sense. And yeah, whole thing was manipulative. That is all. <laughs> Bye. You've probably listened to me talking a lot for a long time at this point in the video. And I thought it was about time to give some DID creators their own voice. I think a lot of Dissociated fans either forget or aren't aware of that Nin was part of a community and is still linked to that community, whether she likes it or not. A community of sufferers, survivors and other creators. Many of these fans who defend Nin are quick to either ignore or not even bother to find out about the other DID creators and their perspectives. I gave an open invitation for any DID system to come forward either in video or written form to give their own opinions about Nin's situations and the community as a whole. Another reminder that just because these people are in my video doesn't mean they agree with everything I have to say and I might not agree with everything they have to say. There is nuance between things and I'm merely supporting them as part of a community and I will support them as individuals who have somewhat been silenced by Nin in the past. Today we've decided to respond to Dissociated's video, her most recent video, since she's come back, and we want it to be clear that this is a critique. This is not hate. This is me addressing concerns about my community, the DID community. Right off the bat, Nin says she missed us. We genuinely have missed you all so much. Did she really? Is my question. Because many systems in the community who have been affected by Nin's lack of communication have been asking her to address her scandals, whether they be true or not, for at least the past six months. However, I find it very suspect that Nin came back precisely at the time when her account would have been demonetized had she not made a video or posted a community post. It has been six months of collateral damage that has harmed content creating systems on this platform. Some of that harm was directed by Nin herself toward specific YouTubers. So when Nin says it's been a journey, you can tell by the way she says it that she's implying she has had a rough time and I'm not going to take anything away from that. That's entirely valid. I would have a rough time too if things I had done had started to be scrutinized. But please know that her difficulty was caused by both her actions and her inactions over the last six months. Even got a little plaque from YouTube, which is super cute over there. I love it. I'm very happy about it, hence why you can see it. <laughs> I had to frame it. I got it and I was like, what? Whoa, when did that happen? Yeah. The plaque must be ordered by the content creator. It did not come as a surprise. This is just one small, very minor example of the lack of transparency that Dissociated fosters in her community. Problematic YouTubers in need of rehabilitating their images often use charity as a vehicle to more easily return to a community they may have harmed. So we will be posting the receipts of everything, so please don't worry about that. The reason uh Nin addresses receipts regarding the charity is because she has been known not to fulfill her contracts. She has a Patreon and it is known that she does not fulfill her Patreon tiers. Nin talks about a more supportive, trauma-informed world. My question, Nin, is supportive for who? Nin is phenomenal at fostering an environment that supports her, first and foremost. She edits any and all comments that critique her behaviors, no matter how legitimate and fair that criticism. The safe environment that she has created. I can say from my own personal experience and from what I've observed within the DID community, that her presence has not felt safe to us. Why? There is a huge power differential between Nin and the next largest DID YouTuber, Multiplicity in Me. She's got exponentially more followers than any other DID YouTuber. 
That is an imbalance in power. Many DID YouTubers have stated that Nin's collateral damage has destroyed the safety of the YouTube platform for them. Some have left altogether. Some were afraid to post about her. It shouldn't be that way. Talk about the dissociative drama, shall we? Okay, so first of all, let's just say that the did claims to have DID like we have DID, right? Like all of us have DID, like you have DID. Like people have DID, right? The way that I describe my DID, I understand that everybody's situations are different. Let me just throw that out there. Let me just throw that out there. We know that you can't judge people from whatever, you know? It's not my place to say anybody's fake. The problem with dissociated is that we were just diagnosed in September and we came online to look it up and look up certain things. And the thing that pops out the most is the dissociated team pinata drama with the all this and the blah 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 that and lying this. So I did my little research, of course I did. And my problem with all of this dissociated drama is that People, doctors, some doctors already don't believe this disorder exists. Okay, sister? When you have people online, oh, so-and-so's doing my makeup, uh, this altar, watch this altar, like you're a sideshow, like it's some type of a circus, like we're, we're entertainment for people. And it's a mental health disorder. Okay, and it causes problems. Like I've been, in, I've been in and out of psych work my whole life and people have been making fun of me for switching personalities all my damn life. Like, and even the people in the BPD community that think they're so cool to be crazy and have a borderline. Like, are you serious? Really? Really, sister? Like, like, and that's my problem. When you sit up and say, okay, um, so-and-so is doing my makeup. Watch this alter do my makeup. It's not a service. It's a disorder, okay? We have doctors who are trying to get this taken out of the DSM-5 and people are gonna look online and see, oh, me switching this like it's a circus, like it's an entertainment. I ask people to think of me like I'm crazy. I've been called all kind of names. I've been in that psych wars. I got stacks of paperwork of discharge papers and stuff. It's not a game. And so I understand and and at one point does our First Amendment rights take effect. Dissociate is a public figure at this point. She has a responsibility because certain things just come with the territory. You need to address your viewers about the situation. That's not bullying, you guys. That's not bullying. I'm not even saying I don't know the girl. She's probably a sweet girl. I don't know her. But what I do know is her image of DID it, it just makes people want to aspire to have it. Like little 12 year old girls and she's got fans and it just makes no sense to me. Like, like what's, you're a fan of a mental illness? Please do something good. Address everything. Address everything. Make a personal channel and address everything. It's really not that hard. I have a mixed opinion of Dissociated. On one hand, they have done some positive things for the community. On the other hand, I have some mixed opinions about the way that they've presented DID. Videos like Switch Caught on Camera can be really triggering and, for example, they didn't seem to make any effort to get Anthony to put a trigger warning before the switch is in his video. Things like that seem to just exist to get views from people without DID who want to gawk and it's sensationalist, in spite of the damage that it can do to people with DID. They present it as the most extreme version of itself, with alters and switches being clear, clear names, 
clear mannerisms, wholly distinguished. And I think part of that comes from the fact that ambiguity in who you are and how separated you are is often a source of judgment and claims that you're faking it. When in reality, it's typical of the condition for there to be that kind of issue. I think that in general, they've done a bit of a disservice to people who don't neatly fit into the dramatic stereotype at times, despite them saying that people are valid, however they experience it. And at times their information has been rather imperfect. I won't go into everything because a lot of the issues with, for example, the research centre and sourcing and inaccuracies with other mental health issues are things that you've already covered in your video. And it's all stressful, but I have additional mental health issues on top of DID, like schizophrenia. And it bothers me when people get thrown under the bus to dispel myths about a different health issue. I'm also not the biggest fan of the way that they've put across system responsibility, from just being about apologising for things, helping people and working through stuff in therapy, so that eventually improves, to some kind of blame game. Mental health issues do not make you immune from criticism. You should say sorry and grow and so forth, but they are health issues at the end of the day. The sufferer likely doesn't want to be having a negative outward impact, but that can't always be fixed overnight, and people are welcome to walk away if they can't handle that. But it's a bit more complicated than just saying system responsibility and wiping your hands of the complexity of the conversation. I guess what I'm trying to say is that they preach system responsibility as a cure-all. They don't live up to their own preaching, and in reality, the issues that can arise are going to be a long process of working through things as a system and with the people who choose to stay in your life. But when it comes to the recent dramas, I'm actually of the opinion that they got blown way out of proportion from Trisha Paytas doing what she always does and stirring drama. And I can understand that it's distressing how she screamed at the camera, but if I can just click away from the video, then so can they. Nobody was forcing them to sit through that if it was genuinely hurting that badly. To the drawings thing, I think that it was a giant internet shit show and everybody involved on every side just acted as melodramatically as possible. I don't really care if somebody draws the Powerpuff Girls in compromising positions because they're fictional characters and I wouldn't call it CP or CSEM because no real child was used and therefore harmed to make it. I never normally interject when reading statements that people have sent to me but i'm going to make an exception because this is a very touchy and controversial topic i disagree with this person and that's what i said at the beginning they will say things that i disagree with and this is the only time i'm going to point out very specifically that i disagree with this because there's no proof that cp or csem actually prevents harm to children in fact quite the contrary it can be used to fuel offending and because of the nature of this topic, it's why I feel the need to interject at this point. It's not me trying to prove this person wrong or to belittle them in any way. It's just a very serious topic and I want to make it clear that I disagree with this statement. Although it's shitty to pressure that people rekindle friendships if it bothers them. When it comes to younger alters, I'm not of the opinion that were actual children slash teens, just fragments of a damaged and dissociated mind. That isn't to say that we can or should do anything that an older alter can or should do, but I'd compare it more to how you should treat somebody who's slightly drunk or in a vulnerable mental state than to a person who's actually of that age. I think similarly when it comes to an alter's race, both are intrinsic part of the character's identity, something they didn't choose and can't change, and are necessary to be discussed when it comes to healing and so forth, but they're not the same as being physically part of that group. I don't know what went on behind the scenes because I wasn't there, the sleepover and everything is just confusing and stressful, but it really doesn't look good at all. All of that isn't to say that I support the drawings or think that nobody can criticise them, but just that the reaction to them was overblown and that it was fueled by both sides, the way that people on their side made it all about oh people just hate DID and oh people are tearing apart the community and made abysmal statements about it was just almost like they wanted an easy out, you know? As somebody who just wants to have an online space where I can be myself without friends going, you're acting weird, something's wrong 
and to talk about the weird ways my brain copes with actual trauma amongst people who actually understand how it feels. It's exhausting to see it become clickbait, drama and constant discourse. Hello Charlie, I just wanted to say a few words about the impact Nin's channel had on my system personally. I am diagnosed with DID. I was diagnosed around the same time that Nin, then Chloe, started the Dissociated channel. I was really young and impressionable and quickly got attached to her as the educational leader of the DID community. I felt like my system and I grew alongside hers. When she started getting more popular, I saw it as a good thing because our stigmatised disorder would get more recognition, until the Anthony Padilla show, where it felt like she was making a complete circus show out of DID. I felt really betrayed, which only got worse as the events with Team Piñata unfolded, and she still hasn't addressed something as serious as that. It feels like she had good intentions in the beginning of her channel. I really want to believe she did, but I think she got lost somewhere along the way and I don't know if she'll ever be the same. Now we have to work harder on undoing the stigma that she created while she still gets millions of fans blindly idolising her. Katrina, the Labyrinth System. There you have it, folks. Part two of the problems with the Socia did because one video just wasn't enough. And I know, I still know now that I have left things out because otherwise we would be here for not just a documentary, two documentaries. You would need a lot of tea and a lot of popcorn to get through it all. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and managed to get through it without falling asleep because I nearly fell asleep many times making it, so I wouldn't blame you. If you got this far in the video, comment, I don't know, a peach in the comments, because peaches are nice. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.